Welcome to the beautiful seaside village of Staithes, a historic fishing community nestled in between the mighty cliffs of the glorious Yorkshire coast. A gorgeous and ever popular visitor spot in the modern day, Staithes is home to an array of bewitching narrow lanes, including perhaps the narrowest in Britain, along with traces of Captain Cook himself and some fantastic seaside scenery. We'll make our way into the old village of Staithes in a moment, but we begin at the village's small but popular beach, which is hemmed in by the cliffs surrounding it. As you can see, the beach here in Staithes attracts a good deal of visitors from around the region, though it's a bit of a hidden gem when compared to some of the more famous wide open sands to be found at nearby destinations like Whitby, Scarborough and Saltburn by the sea. But where exactly on Yorkshire's legendarily beautiful coast is Staithes located? Well, as you can see from this map, the village is one of a number of small fishing settlements situated among the cliffs between the towns of Saltburn and Whitby. Traditionally, Staithes was among the busiest fishing ports on this part of England's coastline, though the village is now most famous as a much-loved tourist haven. That being said, while a number of houses in the heart of Staithes are rented by holidaymakers, many fishermen do live in the village, as Staithes' historic fishing industry remains alive alongside its newer tourist trade. Of course, the sea has shaped this village through the centuries, and while the colourful collection of houses to be found on the seafront does make for a picture postcard view, they've certainly suffered at the hands of the waves of the North Sea. Over the centuries, lashing waves and storms have even knocked down many seafront buildings here, including the beloved Codden Lobster Pub just up ahead, which was at one point reduced to rubble by the sea. However, on this wonderful summer's day, the sea is fortunately as calm as can be. But for now, we'll briefly say goodbye to the seafront, because it's time to make our way into the labyrinth of quaint lanes that make up this historic village. In front of us here is perhaps the most famous landmark in the village, the White House here known as Captain Cook's Cottage, where the renowned explorer once worked. Born near Middlesbrough, Cook spent a year working as a grocer's apprentice in this former shop, from 1745 to 46, although as we know, he was destined for bigger things. Gazing out of these windows onto Staithes' beautiful seafront, it was here that Captain Cook first gained his passion for the sea, and so a year after starting at the grocer's here, he quit his job and moved to Whitby, beginning his seafaring career as a cabin boy. As for the old grocery shop, that was destroyed by the waves later on in time, rebuilt as a private home that's a major attraction in the village today. And as for Captain Cook, the rest is history, although there is more heritage related to his life to be found around this village. Just a bit further back from the seafront here on Church Street, we can see a small but important building in Staithes, the distinctively named Church of St Peter the Fisherman. Originally built as a school, this building was converted into a church in 1874, as the first Anglican place of worship in the village. Before this church, locals in the fishing community here had to walk an arduous mile and a half up out of Staithes to St Hilda's Church in the neighbouring village of Hinderwell, and then of course make their way back home afterwards too. Thankfully for the people of Staithes, the establishment of the church here took the burden of that walk away, while nowadays, the church building doubles as a popular arts and crafts centre too, for locals and visitors, one of a number of activities to enjoy in the village. But while St Peter the Fisherman gives Church Street its name, just off the street is one of the highlights of Staithes, Dog Loop, which is claimed to be the narrowest street in Britain. Separating two houses on Church Street, Dog Loop is little more than an 18 inch or 45 centimetre wide gap, which we'll just about squeeze through to make our way off Church Street. However, while Dog Loop is indeed a ridiculously narrow street, its claim as Britain's narrowest sadly isn't quite accurate. That's because there's an even narrower street located about 300 miles to the south of here in the city of Exeter in Devon. There, Parliament Street is nearly half as narrow as Dogloop here, 
measuring just 9 inches or 25 centimetres wide at its tightest. But there's no denying that the back alleys of Staithes are a wonderful labyrinth to get lost in, each street having its own unique heritage. Here for example, we're walking along Gun Gutter, one of the many oddly named lanes to be found in Staithes. Deeper into the village, there's also a street characterfully named Slippery Hill, and many more that are certain to make you chuckle. But it's among these streets that many of the traditional fishermen's homes are located in the village. Today, the residents of alleys like Gun Gutter or Slippery Hill are often a mix of holidaymakers and families with a long heritage in Staithes. But as well as historic cottages, Staithes is also the home of a range of delightful pubs, the most famous of which we find here at the end of Gun Gutter. This is the Cod and Lobster, an always bustling pub that has stood proudly overlooking the seafront for decades. However, as we mentioned a few minutes ago, this pub is one of many buildings to have suffered heavy damage at the hands of the sea, having been most recently rebuilt in the mid-20th century after an onslaught of particularly devastating waves came crashing through its front windows. This image shows us one of those very waves smashing into the pub during a violent storm in the 1950s, taken from roughly where we're standing now, and showing us just how lucky we are with the weather in Staithes today. Now looking out over the tranquil harbour at low tide, we find ourselves at the place where the village of Staithes as we know it today was first born. Of course, as we've mentioned, Staithes history is inseparable with fishing, and once upon a time, this village was one of the largest fishing ports on the east coast of England. However, long before it became a fishing hub, Staithes was originally settled by Vikings, around the time of the 9th century. But at that time, few people lived here permanently, with this area on the shore acting mainly as a landing place for another village inland, known as Seaton Garth. But that original role served by this area is where the modern village of Staithes gets its name from, deriving from an old English word meaning landing place. Back then, there were few, if any, buildings in Staithes, although I can almost guarantee there were some of these winged rapscallions hovering about. But while the origin of Staithes' name is fairly clear-cut, its pronunciation is somewhat more fluid. For locals, the name Staithes is pronounced rather more like Steers, on account of the local dialect of the Cleveland region. The name also relates to the word Staithe, fairly commonplace across northeastern England to refer to wharfs where ships dock such as on the River Tyne around Newcastle, and along the Northumberland and Durham coast too. Now walking along Staithes cobbled High Street, you might notice that many of the buildings here are all labelled with their own delightful names. In fact, almost none of the houses in the heart of the village here are numbered, which can make for a confusing round for the postman. On this side of the High Street, meanwhile, we find a small but handy clock and barometer, unveiled outside somebody's cottage in 1958. It was placed on the high street to help fishermen tell the time and weather before heading out to sea, serving as just one example of the enduring strength of Staithes' most historic industry. Today, however, tourism is very much the leader in the local economy, with pubs like the Royal George here serving many happy holidaymakers, along with people taking on an impressive local pub crawl. The Royal George is the penultimate stop on the crawl before the Cod and Lobster by the sea, with the drinking route starting about a mile inland from here at the Fox and Hounds, before snaking its way down the cliffs into the heart of Staithes. Here, High Street winds up away from the sea towards where the pub crawl starts, and the houses that we can see lining the High Street showcase a different side to Staithes than those on the alleyways that we've already toured. That area around Church Street and the Cod and Lobster is the oldest part of Staithes, but the village extends much further inland from here, having grown over the centuries. On the route away from the sea, you'll find a number of Georgian-era houses and Victorian buildings that came about as a result of Staithes' rise to prominence as one of the largest fishing ports on England's east coast. This village's heyday in that regard 
came in the 18th century, when it was the largest fishing port in northeast England, playing home to over 300 fishermen who worked here and whose catches were brought up along High Street and away from the village centre to be transported across England. The busy fishing trade continued to power along into the 19th century, when yet more houses were built further up High Street, near to Staithe's old train station, which operated between 1883 and 1958, and was initially built as a gateway for fish caught here to travel inland, and for visitors to make their way to the sea. It was only around the turn of the 20th century when Staithe's fishing industry began to reduce in grandeur, while tourism began to replace it at the heart of the village economy. However, fishing and tourism aren't the only historical industries to have taken place here in Staithes, a veritable village of all trades. Back in the 18th century, Staithes was one of a number of local fishing villages which became known as an infamous hub of illegal smuggling. The most famous of these villages was of course Robin Hood's Bay, about 15 miles down the coast, where pretty much everybody was in on the smuggling trade. Now Staithes wasn't ever as packed with smugglers, but its location made it ideal for illegal imports. As we saw at the start of our walk, Staithes is hemmed in between high cliffs that kept it well hidden from the prying eyes of the law, as word began to get around of the presence of smugglers here. What's more, the landscape in Staithes allowed smugglers' boats to travel deep inland under cover of the cliffs, by way of this spectacular hidden stream. This is Roxby Beck, better known simply as the Beck, which flows from on top of the cliffs down this magnificent valley out to sea. Dotted with moored fishing boats and lined with picturesque cottages under the great blue sky, the Beck is probably the prettiest place in all of Staithes, and that's saying something. Given the village's immense beauty, it's no surprise that Staithes has appeared in everything from paintings to movies and TV shows over the years. If you've got kids, you might recognise the white building up on the right side of the valley here, which serves as the home of Old Jack in the BBC children's show Old Jack's Boat, starring none other than the legendary actor Bernard Cribbins. Along with its starring role in Old Jack's Boat, Staithes has also appeared in films such as Oscar-winning drama Phantom Thread, starring Daniel Day-Lewis, along with a number of iconic paintings. The Beck in particular is famous for featuring in many paintings, as this village was once the home of a flourishing community of artists. In the late 19th and early 20th century, the village was home to the so-called Staithes Group, a colony of 40 Impressionist artists, many of whom lived here in Staithes permanently. Among the Staithes group were famous artists such as Dame Laura Knight, who owned a studio in the village, as well as Joseph Bagshaw, who often ventured out to sea alongside local fishermen so that he could paint Staithes from afar. Over the years, thousands of works were painted by the Staithes group, capturing a different angle of this village with every new painting. Here beside the picturesque Beck, meanwhile, we find Staithes Lifeboat Station, which has been operating for an incredible 148 years. That puts this among the oldest operating lifeboat stations in Britain, having been used time and time again to rescue people from the often harsh and freezing waves of the North Sea. Originally, as fishing declined, Staithes Lifeboat Station was closed down, but it was reopened in 1978 as more and more beachgoers have been visiting the village for a day by the sea. But it's not just this village which the lifeboat station serves, as it's also used to work at the neighbouring village of Runswick Bay, just a couple of miles down the coast, which too is a popular beach destination. Although they've since bought their own lifeboat too, to complement the one that comes all the way out from Staithes here. Now the lifeboat station sits at the mouth of the beck, underneath the striking cliff known as Cowbar Nab, one of two which define the edges of Staithes. Across the harbour, we can see Cowbar Nab's partner, Penny Nab, which towers above the beach where we started our walk. The two cliffs only add to the beautiful landscape of what is undoubtedly one of Yorkshire's prettiest villages, defined by gorgeous higgledy-piggledy streets 
full of history and life. But if you do come to Staithes for a day out, it's not just the village centre that's worth visiting. Beyond the breakwaters that sit at the edge of the harbour, Staithes is a real treasure for keen fossil hunters and rock poolers. Much of this is thanks to the spectacular geological makeup of the coast here, often nicknamed as Yorkshire's Dinosaur Coast, which has been built up over millions of years and which holds many treasures within. With the shifting and falling rocks within the cliffs, having gradually been revealing the traces of the history and prehistory of this spectacular part of the world. On the other side of the harbour beyond Penny Nab, fossils are plentiful, and not all too hard to find when the tide is out, and of course if you know what you're looking for. In fact, underneath some of the cliffs along this coastline, there have even been reports of fossilised dinosaur footprints found in the rocks, although it would be quite the stroke of luck to find something like that on a casual walk along the coast. But here on this side of Staithes Harbour by Kalbar Nab, dinosaurs aren't the only animals you'll encounter. Looking up onto the face of Kalbar Nab, you might be able to spot a number of seagulls dotted around. And when they're not stealing your chips, this is where seagulls, or more specifically herring gulls, come to roost. The seabird colony on Kalbar Nab here is pretty immense, and important not just for seagulls, but for many different types of seabirds. Meanwhile, as well as giving a home for the birds, the rock faces along this western part of Staithes Harbour have also provided a valuable commodity that brought more economic prosperity to the village. The land beside the coast here was historically rich with alum, widely used in textile production during the industrial era, and which was mined along the shore here, and then transported down the coast to Whitby for export further afield. The alum trade expanded across the globe, and served as an important part of development not just for Staithes, but for many coastal communities in this otherwise rather isolated part of England, with mines such as that at neighbouring Bowlby having been built extending down into the cliffs and expanding outwards underneath the seabed, perhaps even beneath us now. That makes Bowlby's mine the deepest in Britain, but here on the edge of the village, we find ourselves with the golden opportunity to walk along what is normally the bed of the violent North Sea. Here you can see the especially sturdy breakwaters composed of rocks and a large concrete structure that's designed to protect the harbour from the rough waves of the North Sea. But fortunately, the tide's out at the moment, and that makes this typically underwater area easily accessible from the village centre, acting as a perfect place for a spot of rock pooling. A typically idyllic seaside pursuit, with a bit of rock pooling you can see the labyrinth of tunnels and valleys under the water in which little fish, crabs and more live. Many will have of course scarpered upon seeing my big scary face and a camera looking into their home, but this area is full of wonderful sea life. As we tiptoe towards the water's edge, looking around the cliffs at the edge of Staithes, in the distance we can see the many more cliffs of the Yorkshire coast. From here, we're looking due west in the direction of Bowlby and Saltburn-by-the-Sea, both of which have also had their own histories shaped by the magnificent cliffs of this coastline. Hugely imposing from down below as they jut out to sea, you can actually walk along the cliff tops and get a spectacular view out to sea across this magnificent region. A long distance cliff top pathway, known as the Cleveland Way, follows the line of the cliffs on its 109 mile route that passes through characterful villages like Staithes and also makes its way across the wild North York Moors further inland. The Cleveland Way is the perfect route to take in some of the very best scenery in Yorkshire, but there are few spots along its route that are quite as delightful as Staithes. More than just a pretty face, this historic fishing village turned tourist favourite is draped in history and culture at every turn, not to mention the incredible natural scenery that surrounds it. And so, as we now find ourselves at the water's edge, we've come to the end of our walk around Staves for today. Thank you so much for watching this video, I really hope you enjoyed it, 
and I hope you're now itching to visit Staithes for yourself too.